for the entire 2022 so far, I think we could all agree that the market has been a bit of a bummer. And there were definitely days where I wake up, get to my desk pre-market, look at all the tickers on my screen, and immediately want to go back to bed. Just kidding, little do people know there's actually a lot of profits to be made in this kind of bearish market environment right now. And the only thing that's consistently working is short selling. I'm seeing a lot of false breakouts on both the small caps and the large caps, especially in the morning. What used to work in 2020 and 2021 was a lot of the momentum breakouts will be followed by even more buyers, whether the smart buyers or the FOMO buyers, but the breakouts will have a better chance of continuing. But now it's the exact opposite this year. All the breakouts, everyone's just trying to get out of their bags. So that's the reason at each pop is sold into and each little lower high is creating more volume on the selling side to the downside of course and that's why it's good for the short sellers i'm going to be recapping a lot of my recent trades today and you'll be able to see that they are mostly on the short side that's just the state of the market so if you are currently struggling in this kind of market right now, I really encourage you to watch the last few short selling videos I have on YouTube, especially the last one called how to find stocks to short step by step and I actually show you how to find those shares to short at your broker and execute them. That was actually a really fun video where I actually went outside of my home to film in the real world in the city of Vancouver. So if you haven't watched that already, make sure you go do so. And let me know if you want to see more videos like that in the future. Okay, so let's dive into the recaps right now. We'll start from the trades today. So recently, the small caps have been finally been coming back. They were dead uh, pretty much from January to end of April this year. But in May, started with Ver Veru, they started coming back. So one of which is RDBX. This is a stock I'm very familiar with. I shorted this um, in the beginning of May. Um, but recently, it's been coming back. You can see a lot of these like small caps are having dead cap bounces from three dollars this one all the way to five and six dollars almost seven yesterday i didn't short rdbx yesterday because the locate was really expensive i couldn't find any shares to short um but today they popped up on my on my on the on my scanner in the during the morning breakout right you can see this thing had a little breakout from 570s to test the 620s now if you look at the 620s area just draw a, a line over here draw across the board that's literally the resistance area from yesterday. So this is what I meant by earlier, a lot of the morning breakouts are now becoming lower highs for the people bag holding the stock above $6 to get out GTFO out of their holding bag holding position, right? So that's the kind of psychology you want to remember. As a short seller, you want to short when people holding the bag, the longs, they are frankly trying to like hit the bid to get out. So that's what you are trying to aim for. And that's been happening a lot in this market. So shorted the 620s or 614s starter and I really added to full size um, once the stock broke down to green to red and I just rolled it down from that's like about a six dollars average after the ad rolled it down to about five twenties five eighteens I was trying to hold for the you know four ninety four eighties eventually but I didn't like that midday was starting to curl back up so I covered all my short position. And then there were a couple other ones that's not really worth talking about um because it would just the market today was really choppy. So there are days where the market was more directional, in my opinion, like yesterday. So we're gonna talk about some trades from yesterday too. But today it was really choppy for me. So I couldn't get anything going. So A and D, I traded this on the short side, didn't get much. You know, this thing sold off right at the open. I was waiting for a bounce to short, uh, which did happen, but at the time I was trying to focus on RDBX. Um, I like to be in maximum one full size or two sometimes trade at a time. And um, this wasn't, 
it wasn't the ideal setup for me to stay on. So this one turned out to be a small scalp, never added to full size. Same idea as um, BBY, same thing, you know, not much going on. One entry, one exit, and left it alone. Um, and this one was Walmart. So this is actually a continuation trade from yesterday. So this is the Walmart chart from yesterday. Uh, if you have been following the market, which you should, you know, following the sector moves uh, about which sectors is finally getting a bounce after being really beaten down. Um, and retailers yesterday was the day before and yesterday was the first days that where they got like a bid. Um, and finally, this is some volume starting to come in on the buying side. You can see that on, um, um, Ross, um, Costco, um, Target, um, and Walmart is definitely one of the retailers. So you want to follow the money in the sector. You don't want to just pick random stocks to trade, right? That's another thing I want to talk about. Stock selection in this kind of envi market environment is extremely important. We don't want to be picking random stocks like Tesla or Facebook or Apple on random days to trade. You want to trade with a sector. So today, um, tech was extremely bearish. So that's the reason I was trying to short AMD. Didn't work out that well, but I knew not to go long. So Walmart was the one trade I was looking for to long yesterday. Um, I actually long a bit more overnight, which you saw today I cut for a loss. Didn't exactly continue um, today right away until much later on, I cut it right here. So small loss on this, but yesterday I made some really decent gains. On the long side, all the way from 120s, I think I rolled it as high as uh, 122s and 123s. So that was a very, very nice bounce day for Walmart. So in this kind of market environment on the long side, there has to be a real catalyst for the stock and the entire sector has to agree with it. In this market, it's extremely important to have a daily trading plan. You want to know to how to pick the tickers to trade, whether that's a small caps, large caps, long or short biased. You, it's not like in 2021 last year where you can trade random stocks on your scanner and have money just fly off the roof. It just doesn't work like that anymore. So you got to adapt. So that's why having a watch list is really important. And that's why we do daily pre-market trade planning every single morning and prepare the watch list live with our members in the Humble Trader community. And due to popular requests, we recently opened monthly memberships again. So if you've been waiting for a while for this, this is your chance. Limited time only, we're gonna close it again once the spots are full. And another one from yesterday is SIGA, SIGA short for me. So this thing gapped up a lot after hours on Friday due to the concerns about um, monkey pox. Um, this thing gapped up all the way from prior day's close of $12 to $17. Now, while, you know, this is a big gap up, in 2021, that would have gapped up, held the gap up, and continued breakout. But uh, the trend is pretty clear in 2022, like we talked about. Huge gap ups or huge breakouts are being sold into. So that's why I was more leaning short bias, especially after this thing broke down $16 pre-market. Um, and at the open, this thing was just extremely heavy. No one was buying the stock. You can see on the chart right here, it couldn't even pop. It couldn't even test VWAP. Um, so that's how you know this thing is extremely weak and you just hit the bid and short this thing to oblivion. Um, from $14, you can see it dropped from 1440s down to about 13s, had a small bounce to 1320s. That's why I added um, and covered into 1260s and all the way going green to red to $11.80. And by the way, this thing was easy to borrow as well. It didn't cost anything to borrow the stock. And you can see on all my recent execution charts over here, especially on the tech stocks, all the breakouts has been sold into. You can see here, Nvidia, little morning gap up pre-market, you know, bounce off the lows to test the breakout levels from the day before, immediately got rejected and sold off back from 182s down all the way to 170s. You can see on the chart, I even left a lot of money on the table. Same thing as this chart on AMD. Stock sold off from $93 after finally a daily bounce all the way down to 86. Man, I kind of looking at this, it makes, really makes me want to cry because I covered everything at $89. 
And same thing here on UPST. Missed on earnings, huge gap, on, gap down overnight and continues to sell off. Um, and this was another one of the swing short positions I had. Opened it after the earnings announced, shorted it, and next morning it gapped down from 40s all the way down to 32s. So the market has stream, been extremely uh, relentless when it comes to these overvalued um, growth stocks, especially the tech names. So that's some that's been the theme, and uh, you know we might still catch a bit here and there with the market finding a lows and trying to bounce. And you don't want to underestimate the uh, rally you have in this kind of bearish environment. You always want to you know have obviously have your stops and risk management. Shorting works most of the time in this market, but you don't want to be oversized on the days it doesn't work either. Also, I know it's been a bit of a while since I've done these kind of recap videos on YouTube because nobody seemed to be watching them in the past. The views were always really low and there were not a lot of comments. So this time around, since I'm bringing it back, if you want to keep on seeing these kind of recap videos and trading commentary, make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below to let me know if you want me to keep on making more videos like this. And also, don't forget to leave your trading questions below as well. I'll bring back the Q&As we used to do in the recap videos, and uh, I'll make sure to answer your questions. One last thing is we're going to be doing a Humble Trader Meetup and Trading event in New York next month for the Humble Trader members. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the link below. It's going to be very fun. We're going to be trading together for the whole day, and the next day there will be drinks, food, a food tour and uh, you know lots of games and we're gonna go bowling it's gonna be a lot of fun so I look forward to meeting some of you in New York soon so thank you guys so much for watching as always leave your questions in the comment section below and I will see you guys next time